Welcome back to Pattern Recognition. So today we want to start looking into a special feature transform that is called the Independent Component Analysis. And essentially today we want to introduce the idea and why independent components may be useful in terms of a feature transform. So let's have a look at our slides and the independent component analysis tries to address the cocktail party problem. So here imagine the situation that you have two microphones at different locations and these microphones record some signal x1 and x2 that is dependent on the time. Now each recorded signal is essentially a weighted sum of the speakers in the room. For simplicity, let's assume that there are two speakers in the room. And we can model this essentially as a weighted sum of the two speakers, what we collect in microphone one and in microphone two. So the parameters depend essentially on the distance between the microphones and the speakers. So now we would be interested, of course, to reconstruct the signal from the two speakers. And this can be done using factorization methods and in particular the idea of the independent component analysis. So for simplicity we just assume a very simple mixing model without any time delays or further factors here. And this then means if we knew the AIJ the problem of reconstructing S is to solve the linear equations by classical methods because we simply need to compute the inverse of this so-called mixing matrix. Now the problem is that we don't know the AIJ. So thus the problem is considerably more difficult and we can't just use the matrix inverse of these unknown coefficients. So we have to estimate them as well. Now let's look into a simple example. So here I brought two signals, two audio signals. One is me speaking, of course, about machine learning. Machine learning is a great tool that is revolutionizing. And the other the one is a piano that is playing some background music. Now you can see that what we would record at the microphone would then typically be a superposition of the two signals. So in one, you can hear that my voice is louder. Machine learning is a great tool that is revolutionary. And in the other one, my voice is not as loud. Machine learning is a great tool that is revolutionizing. Now the idea is that we want to find the unmixing matrix, and with the unmixing matrix, we are able to reconstruct the original audio signals. And you can see this is actually a pretty hard task, but still the results are quite impressive. So here you can hear my reconstructed voice from the superposition of the two signals. Machine learning is a great tool that is really And here you can hear the reconstructed music. So generally the cocktail party problem has many, many more applications. So it's not just for unmixing two speakers or a sound source in the speaker, but generally you can recover speech signals from telecommunications. You can recover images from mixed signals like an MRI and functional MRI. Then there's also examples where you can essentially reconstruct electrical recordings of the brain activity. So this is used in EEG and MEG signals. And of course, it is a popular way of extracting features. And you can even do multispectral image analysis with this. So let's look into the separation of natural image. So here you see that we have four different sources. So it not just works with two sources, but you can also just increase the size of the mixing matrix. And then let's look at a total of four sources. Then you mix them somehow with the input to our independent component analysis. You can see that essentially we are close to not be able to recognize anything on those pictures. 
and then we perform the independent component analysis and you can see that it is very well reconstructed so we see that the different animals can be reconstructed we also get a reconstruction of the noise so generally this is a method that has a broad range of applications note that the sequence of the images has changed so this is a general drawback of the independent component analysis we don't get a ranking of the inputs so we still have to look at the outputs and then identify which source has been mapped onto which output channel now this was an application in imaging so we can also use this to analyze brain activity and here we are actually looking into an MEG acquisition and you see that the MEG field is actually acquiring a superposition of all the different things that are happening in the brain so we have a mixed signal that we are observing and if we now apply an independent component analysis then we are able to reconstruct different activities in the brain. So we can use this method in order to localize different independent components and regions of activity in the brain. So the common framework is that we have some information about the statistical properties of the signals in order to estimate the mixing coefficients AIJ. Now it turns out that the only statistical assumption that we have to make is that the signals are statistically independent at each time point t. And this then gives rise to the independent component analysis that has been formulated in a unified mathematical framework by Hero and Juten in the years 1984 to 1991. So the idea is that we model this as statistical latent variables and we rewrite the time series into n linear mixture observations. And then each mixture xi as well as each component sj are random variables. So we have essentially the xi is computed as a superposition of the signals in a linear way. Now we can also write this in matrix notation. Then this would simply be x equals to a times s. And now a is a constant mixing matrix. So this doesn't change. Then we have the latent random variables sj. These are the independent components and both A and SJ have to be estimated based on the observations XI. Now this is actually a pretty hard problem because we somehow need to factorize our signals and you will see in the following that this problem is actually not unique. So let's assume that we have a zero mean as we already did in the discriminant analysis. And then we can see that if we had a zero mean, then we can express the expected value of x, x transpose, meaning the covariance matrix, as u times d times u transpose, where this is the singular value decomposition of the covariance matrix. Now d is a diagonal matrix and u is an orthonormal matrix, which is essentially a rotation in this high dimensional space. We've also seen that if we compute the inverse, then we can essentially express this as 2 times this factor u times d to the power of minus 0.5 times the identity matrix times the factor again transposed. So we can compute a mapping to a normalized space using exactly this feature transform. Now actually, if we have zero mean vectors, this mapping is also known as the whitening transform because we essentially map everything onto a white noise. And this has, of course, interesting properties. The mapped random variables xi tilde are uncorrelated and x tilde also has unit variance. As you can see here, if I plug in x tilde, you get this feature transformed vectors. Then you can actually map it in this way. So you can actually see that the outer product of x and x transpose can be rewritten as the covariance matrix of x. And 
then we can replace the factorization of the covariance matrix here and then you see that essentially all of this cancels out and in the very end only the identity matrix remains. So let's think about the first approach. So we could interpret the mapped random variable x tilde as an estimate of the latent variable model and this would essentially then give us simply x tilde as the solution to the signals but unfortunately this gives us poor results and the main problem is that this whitening transform is not unique. Now I can consider an arbitrary orthogonal matrix R and simply transform our x tilde into some x hat and we simply add this matrix to the feature transform. If you look at this closely then you can see that I can essentially apply the same trick for the expected value of x hat. So we do the expected value of x hat times x hat transpose. This gives us again a kind of covariance matrix. We apply the same transformation as previously. We see that the inner part we already know cancels out to the identity matrix and then we have R times the identity matrix times R transpose and this is nothing else than the identity matrix. So you can see we can choose an arbitrary orthogonal matrix R and multiply it to our whitening transform and the property of being distributed with an identity matrix as covariance matrix would not vanish. So there is essentially an infinite number of whitening transforms that all fulfill this property. So whitening is not just enough. Next time in pattern recognition, we want to look at the actual idea to construct the independent component analysis and we will see what additional steps are required in order to perform the unmixing of the signals. So I hope you enjoyed this small video and you are all now very excited about independent component analysis and we'll see how to actually compute it in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and bye bye.